Forget what the tire says on the side. Mud terrain, all terrain hybrid. Here is what you are looking for specifically to run through deep powder or even just maximize traction on your next snow trip. If you listen close, you can hear the sound of my 39 inch all terrain air down to three PSI, just crunching, packing and holding snow. And you can hear that snow sticking to more snow. And this is exactly what we're looking for. We are slowly working our way up and down all this deep snow in Canada. And this is for a couple of different reasons that we're able to do this. One, we've got nice big tires. Two, they're aired down super, super low. If you look at all the different little snow craters and stuff that live in these places, they always have these crazy huge feet. And it's so they don't just like post hole and just like sink down and then get stuck and get eaten by something else. And um, we don't have to worry about getting eaten by something else, but we definitely need to worry about post holing. We need to worry about our tires just sinking and then us getting hung up on the frame and diffs. So because we're aired down, because we have that fat contact patch, it gives us this ability to stay on top. But now when you add that with the fact that we have all terrains instead of mud terrains, the all terrains hold on to that snow. They're not designed to clear and eject debris the way a mud terrain is. And for that reason, it gives us the ability, whenever the tire turns, it makes it easier to move forward instead of move down. Because especially when you're climbing in snow like this, the tire, it tends to want to dig down unless it's going forward. So snow sticks to snow better than, than rubber sticks to snow. And for that reason, or for those three reasons, we're able to just slowly work and chew our way through all these really high elevation hills and have a great time doing it. Did you know that Iceland has its own tires? Like not the country, of course, but the market. They have their own snow tire market and they have stuff that we don't have access to here. And when I went there last year and I was like, off-roading a little bit and we went to Arctic trucks and I was looking at these Iceland specific off-road tires, like not for passenger cars, but for big trucks like we build here, the first thing I noticed is that the tread design for these tires that are designed to drive over glaciers is so similar to the classic all-terrain design you see here in the United States. And this got me thinking how important it is to not look at what it says on the side of the tire, but to look at the tread design and read the design itself and decide, is this going to hold onto the snow? Is this going to bite? Or even though this says all-terrain, is it actually designed a little bit more like a hybrid tire? Not all all-terrains are created equal and not all all-terrains are great in the snow. Some of them are like really good in the snow, but what you need to look for when you're shopping for an all-terrain isn't just like the three peak rating, which we'll explain later in the video, or the fact that it says all-terrain. What you need to look for is how wide is the lug spacing? The lug spacing in this tire, this is an all-terrain and it's a pretty decent all-terrain for sure, but it has really wide lug spacing, which is gonna be good in the mud and it's got a tapered lug or tapered tread, which is also good for clearing in the mud but it's not gonna hold on to snow as good as an all-terrain that you're gonna find where everything is super tight together. This has a bunch of siping, which is gonna be awesome in the snow. It's also gonna make the tire as a whole more supple so it can like bend around the obstacles on the trail, whether that be, you know, you're driving over some sort of a knot of ice or something. But at the end of the day, what you wanna find if, if you are looking for the best possible snow tire is something where all of these little like voids are as tight as possible and not tapered straight up and down so that it can hold onto the snow. To me, this tire is a great example of like this new generation of hybrid tires that we're seeing. This is clearly a combination between a mud terrain and an all-terrain and the fact that it's tighter spacing than you would see in a really aggressive mud terrain, but it's definitely designed to clear. You can see these little features in between the lugs that are designed to help this clear whenever you're in mud, but clearing is not great when you're going through that super deep powder. You want a tire that holds on to the snow. So you need to make that choice. Do you want something that's gonna hold on to the terrain to make it to where you have more traction in the snow? Or do you want something that's going to eject as much of the terrain out of its tread as possible in order to continue moving down those muddy roads. This is what you are shopping for when you're looking for a snow tire. So let's start with the most popular snow tires people are using in the US, and that's just various mud terrains. And if you look at a mud terrain, 
it's, you know, it's got these really big voids in between the tread, the treads tapered so that as this tire is spinning, it's ejecting. Things want to fly off of it because it's tapered. It's fatter at the top than it is at the bottom of the void. Also, you have features that they add into these tires to make it to where it's easier for air to basically get behind that chunk of mud and come off as the tire is spinning around. This is a KM3, same kind of deal. See these features in between these lugs or in between these, uh, these little bits of tread? It makes a big difference in its ability to clean. Um, this tire, I actually grooved. I took a groover and I cut all of these little lines into here. And this made a giant difference in making this tire a little bit more flexible as a snow tire. Because in between, it, all these little spots like to hold on to the snow. So even though it's pretty easy for the snow to clear out of here, this, this took a couple steps forward as being like a halfway decent snow tire. And because we have all these extra cuts, it made it to where this tire is also a little bit more supple so it can really wrap around and grab the terrain. This actually made this better in the rocks too, which these KM3s are already a great rock tire, but I think that this made it an even better rock tire. This is not like the best end all be all snow design, but for a tire in this size, like this is a 39 inch all terrain. It's about as big as you'll find here in the States. This has clearly been designed to hold stuff, not to let things eject out of the tread. Look how tight all that tread is in comparison to these other tires. And on, as a bonus, there's tons of siping in here. Now, personally, if I was to design a tire like this, I would put even more siping. Like you can't have too much siping when it comes to a snow tire, but this tire holds onto snow so much better because the in between the tread, it's not tapered. So it, like it really grabs onto that snow. And because there's enough siping, it allows this carcass to be like super supple um, over terrain. Now we'll talk about carcass here in a second. This is like this new generation of hybrid tire. And as you can see, the, the tread is a little bit closer together than you'd find in like a more aggressive mud terrain, which is why they call this an RT. But in between the tread, everything is tapered, just like you would see in one of these other mud terrains. And I have used these, these are <laughs> Fury Country Hunters. They're, they're corny cheap tires. I used them in the snow, they were pretty awful. Even though it's wide and it did air down okay, it just couldn't hold on to any snow, so it really wanted to dig pretty much in any environment I put it in. The three peak snow rating is a pretty cool indicator that at least the tires you're buying have been tested against like certain government standards with for like acceleration in the snow, braking in the snow, like skidding in the snow, that kind of thing. But it's not like the end all be all. So I think that if you found some sort of a cool exotic snow tire that doesn't have the three peak rating, I wouldn't necessarily like stray away from it. It just means that they didn't like submit their tires to whatever the this, this standard is. But if you're wanting for some sort of like a cheat sheet on what tires are going to be halfway decent in the snow, at least you know that if it has that rating on the side that they've earned that stamp, that that particular manufacturer took the time to put it through the tests to prove that it is a viable snow tire. We're in Idaho. We're at like 10 PSI, which is our like trail pressure to get up here. And now that we're getting up into the snow, we're starting to slip. We got to air down. And this is like one of the most important parts when it comes to buying a snow tire. You gotta find something that when you air it down, it actually flattens out on the bottom. Not all tires are created equal when it comes to airing down. So kind of a cheat code is to look at the tire weights. If what I would do is I would look at whatever size tire that you're looking at, um, look at the different tire weights for that size from all the different manufacturers. The lighter the tire, the thinner the carcass, the better it's gonna be at airing down. Now sometimes you're gonna to have to sacrifice durability so you're gonna to have to make that choice for you. But if you want the best performing snow tire and that's all you're concerned about is doing the absolute best in snow and getting into that super deep powder, like up here in the mountains of Idaho, you've gotta get a tire that has a carcass that's soft enough that whenever you air it down, it flattens out and you get that huge contact patch so you can keep climbing. Snow changes more than any other environment that I drive on. I mean, it could change from morning to night. It could change from hour to hour. The sun could come out and just kind of like glaze the top surface of whatever it is that you're driving on. So that said, knowing that temperature will change snow, time will change snow, it could get rained on for an hour. It, I mean, there's so many different variables in snow. We can't really paint with a broad brush and just say that all terrains are better than mud terrains or that in my opinion, it's better to run low tire pressure than it is to run tire chains. But 
there are some types of snow where chains definitely work better. Like when it's a super, super soggy snow, I feel like the more aggressive the tread or with chains, you would get better traction. But for the kind of snow that I like and the stuff that we try to get to at that really high elevations, all the rules that you saw in this video apply. I think that an all-terrain typically nine times out of 10 is gonna perform best in that really deep, really cold powder. But because the environment changes so much, you've just gotta go prepared no matter what kind of tire you have, no matter what the environment was yesterday versus today, you've gotta be ready to get stuck. You gotta get, be ready to get out. But if you go prepared and you have the right gear, it is an absolute blast. I'm not claiming to be Mr. Snow Expert or anything, but I definitely wanted to show some of the thing, the theories that I've developed over the years with those of you that have been asking constantly in the comment section and like every snow video. This is my son, Chris. He wants to be in it. This is Nathan. He is the new owner of the Lexus and uh, it's, he's gonna continue to work on it. New very happy owner, but yeah, we got plans. We got plans. He's got plans. He's on YouTube. So if you want to check him out, I will put a link to his uh, his channel. And uh, God, this thing's getting heavy. I got to switch arms. <laughs> and um, if the footage from the beginning of this video of us up in Canada playing last weekend, um, if you want to check that out, definitely make sure you check out my buddy Will's channel. I will link his channel uh, in the description as well. Venture to Rome, outstanding storyteller. Both these guys, I highly recommend both of these channels. So anyway, I hope you learned something or at least gave you something to chew on and think about and test out in the snow where you live. We'll see you on the next one.